r slash relationships. Ipokachok says. My partner of 9 years admitted to cheating today. Hi all yesterday I, 32 male, went out for a meal with my partner of 9 years, 33 female, before she was heading out with some ex-work colleagues for a charity event, she recently moved to a new company. I knew that alcohol would be involved, and as we have 3 young children she has not drank in a long time, multiple years at this point. I do trust her, and we have a great relationship with plenty of intimacy so this hurts, and leaves me heartbroken. I headed home after our meal, after dropping her off at the apartment of a work friend, before they headed to the event. We both know she doesn't handle alcohol well, so I hinted to go easy, avoid shots and keep in touch. Once home I tidied up, and headed to bed for some rest after as I'd had a long day. I set my phone ringtone to the loudest volume, and figured she'd call, when she needed a ride home. I woke at 3.20am, and hadn't received any contact from her so tried calling twice with no answer. Two minutes later she had texted me asking for a ride home. I replied asking where, and got no reply. She called after 10 minutes, and told me, that she'd went back with the group to someone else's place, and that it was a group of people from her work. I hopped in the car, and went to get her. She was outside where she said she would be, drunk but not too bad in my opinion. We exchanged small talk on the way back then once home she took off her macup, and went for a shower. She had said, that she had smoked some cigarettes, and as a non-smoker wanted to get rid of the smell, and not get into our bed smelling of smoke. This is something I accepted as her ex-smoker she knows, that when I go out with friends I will occasionally have a few over the course of a night, I only typically go out for drinks with friends once or twice. A year at this point, family time comes first for me. This afternoon we were in the garden with the two youngest children, and I was trying to be supportive as she had a hangover. I asked how the night was, and asked about the party. I had thought it strange, that she hadn't called at all, and had asked, if I hadn't texted, or called when she would have been in contact. It was then, that she said she had something to confess, and that she had kissed someone. I was shocked, but kept my cool, and asked what happened. I asked if the party was a lie and she confirmed that. I then asked, if anything else happened, but she said she was blackout drunk, and didn't remember much. I asked some further questions to which she then admitted that other stuff may have happened. It took a lot of discussion, to finally get some more detail, in that it was someone, that worked at her last company, that she did not know. And that they went back to his place, and kissed before trying to have sex, but he was unable to get hard fully, but she cannot be certain, that it didn't actually go the full way. I was purely trying to get to the bottom of the truth, and get all the facts established. I had contacted her mother, and asked if she could watch the kids so most of this discussion happened away from home in the car. I drove her to a pharmacy, to get emergency contraceptive and she agreed. It took a lot of questioning from my part, to get details out of her, and I just don't know, if she's holding back information still. It has left me not knowing what is real and what isn't. I don't know, if that trust is gone for us now, and I really need some advice. Is this typically a broken bond, that cannot be repaired? TL, doctor, partner cheated, lied then told me, that she had cheated in a drunken one. Ipokachok says. So I feel, like I need to clarify some points, based on the comments in here. It was 2am, when I posted this, and the nerve slash shock slash disappointment may have been affecting my ability, to write out the information. 1. She did not have me drop her at the guy's house as some have misread. I dropped her at a female ex-colleague's apartment, that I have personally met once, or twice in public with my partner, and know she lives at this location. 2. I know for certain, that the event was legitimate, it was hosted in the function room of a pub and restaurant. 3. From being with her for years, and knowing how she is with alcohol slash how she can step beyond enjoyment and drink to excess, I know from previous just ourselves, that she has had spotty memory of a night. 
E.G. A trip to Paris years ago before kids where we both got drunk, and I was shocked how little she could. Remember the next day. 4. I know the kids are mine, no concern there. They look like me, one was conceived and born during covered lockdown times etc. No worries there. 5. A few comments have doubted this post, asking why I left kids in the middle of the night to go get her. Her parents had the youngest two kids for a sleepover as they live closest, my mother had our oldest staying with her. She had told me once I'd driven yesterday morning, to pick up our oldest from my mother's. I would like to thank the supportive messages, I can see some messages are taking the clear black white approach, I respect all the opinions and posts however please understand it isn't always as easy as that to simply walk away. I will take the time I need to evaluate the situation. We have spoken together, and she has said to take my time, to come to terms etc. Taking a dump right now says. Sorry your marriage is over. Your wife is an awful person and you deserve better. Celtic DK says. Cheating is cheating. Andy the pig says. TL, doctor, in short, this doesn't have to be the end. But it will take discussion, communication, and it will require some time that she has to earn back that trust. At the same time, you have to promise not to hold it over her head. I think a temporary truce, of sorts, for a few days. Keep life status QUO. But do say that you're hurt, but not that this is the full end. Other than that, you'll have to agree to just be awkward, and think for yourselves for a few days. It does need discussing, and will probably require couples therapy. It's important to determine why, even in that state, it was okay in her mind to do this. It seems to me, that something is missing for her. That's okay. That happens in relationships. Things GRT stale, or stagnant, for lack of a better word. Ventura Bide says. How sure are you, that the kids are yours? Ultra Fellow of the Royal Society 1102 says. I'm gonna take a different spin to previous responses on this thread possibly. Your partner of 9 years with whom you have kids, and are very intimate with still to this day, which in and of itself is a hard thing, to accomplish in this digital age, where all it takes to get sex is a swipe right, yes she lied initially, and tried to cover it up with the whole smoke odor on my skin bs, so she could have a shower and remove any immediate evidence of infidelity, but at the same time after some. Minor questioning because you had concerns she told you the truth relatively quickly or at least what she could remember. She agreed to an emergency contraceptive just in case, and told you probably about as much as you're going to get out of her assuming the blackout was real, this could of course be a lie, but it could also be the fact she was morbidly drunk or something more nefarious, like she was spiked by the aforementioned ex-co-worker. I normally would not side with someone who cheated at all, it's an atrocious act, and can very easily destroy even a long term, strong relationship but I think in this case, partly because it sounds, like it's the first time it's. r slash relationships. Pressisaurus Postus says. A guy, 20 male, said to me, 25 female, we should be called just friends. There was this guy 20 male who would totally chase me 25 female in college. He would harass me and force me to do stuff. I had nobody else to work with in college and he knew I was alone, so he took advantage to be my close friend and do stuff to me. I did not understand how bad this was until recently. After college is over, I never heard of him again. I tried to talk to him back on social media. When I did, he blocked me on all social media. Also I do not know if I should listen to any idea of just friends, known by friends with benefits. For me makes no sense, if happens some girl getting pregnant with some just friend, isn't that negative? TL, doctor, should I consider friends with benefits as a valid proposal? Nats4756 says. Anyone forcing you to do stuff is not a good person. r slash relationships 
comprehensive underscore age 837 says. I, 24 male, am struggling to want to date after bad breakup with my partner, 22 female. This ex was the first real relationship I had. We dated for about 4 years, and then I had the traumatic experience of finding out she was cheating on me with a friend. We had gotten engaged, and bought our first house together a few months prior. Obviously, things didn't work out. It's been a little over a year now, and I still have no desire to date, which is super weird for me. I haven't been more than a few months without dating someone since I was 14, and have always had a super strong urge to be with someone. Kind of afraid I'm just not going to get that desire back. Also, traditional gender roles are out, apparently, but I don't know any other men who have gone through this, so I feel very awkward trying to talk to my friends about it. I actually have a fantastic friend who had a long term relationship and, not mutually, recently and he was with someone else 6 weeks later, and they seem very happy together. Meanwhile, over a year later, and I still, don't want to date anyone else. Anyone with a similar experience, have advice for making yourself want to date again after a bad breakup. TLDR, previous relationship killed my desire to date. Mood underscore less says. Yes me too. It's been a year a half I only just started to want to date again. Give yourself some time man. E underscore Z underscore Z says. I agree with that, take your time and just enjoy having friends. Do stuff you like to do, and spend time with people who have the same interests. You're not on a schedule, deep heartbreak takes time to recover from. And you owe it to yourself to be patient. When you feel better, don't be afraid to go out on a date without expectations. You can just spend time with someone nice and enjoy yourself, not everything has to be serious. I personally found journaling helpful when recovering from a nasty breakup. It's a way to check in with yourself and manifest your feelings. Not for everyone but it can be cathartic to put your thoughts on paper. Fan says. Yes. Advice. Don't push yourself. Let yourself heal. Do not date until you are ready. Have you talked to a counselor about your previous relationship? That's all for this video. Was it good? I know not for I'm a robot. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. This video is the product of an automated process.